Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video. Yeah, so as you know, you know the police force at this moment um, in time. There's a, a woman by the name of Melissa Sylvia, Sylvia who was murdered. Yes, she was killed. And we don't know where. But one thing we can give thanks are, um, yes, is former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson. Yes, I first we're going to say something good about this man. If it wasn't for P.J. Patterson, this man, they would get away with murder, including the police force. Because it's a big cover-up, you know. Yes. And we can tell you that um, we're going to tell you to DCP Fitzbailey. I don't know the man. When I said know him, I don't go see him. I used to see him. I used to, you know, back in the day when I was a detective, I used to see him um, at Alpha Tree Court and other courts. But I don't see him as any detective. Because a fraud detective are not detective. Them just deal with paper and you understand what I'm saying? They, they don't deal with crime. So I can tell you this. And I'm saying this from, you know, based on my observation about this man. This man have no credibility. have no um, character period this deputy commissioner of police is the first i've ever seen a deputy commissioner of police who's willing to sell his soul just to be a deputy commissioner of police and the reason why i am saying this um the first the first case that come to mind is the case with patrick bailey i can't tell you uh, you know as to me i don't care what a guy wants to say about me you know because i am a i am a person who believe in a good policing you understand as I said before, I don't like thief in police. I don't like police who are corrupt. And the, the, the case that involved Patrick Bailey, that was a slam dunk case. And the worst part about it, guess what? Unfortunately, <laughs> why is the second case now we see happening uh, this, this, uh, we see happening in Jamaica and this man Fitzbailey is the head of the Criminal Investigation Bureau or branch, what they call it now in Jamaica. And I want you to listen him because honestly, whether or not you like PJ Patterson or not, it's PJ Patterson why this case is still alive. But most people don't know. And when you're finished listening to um, Fitz Bailey, we're gonna let you know we'll you know continue the journey. But I am telling you, you watch, you listen, you decide. Fitz Bailey, we give you Deputy Commissioner of Police, Fitz Bailey, yes, who used to. You know, um, be at fraud squad. Is the man that in charge of crime, investigating crime in Jamaica? I am telling you, it can't get no worse than this. Believe you me. So you watch, you listen, you decide. We are looking at the, the entire scenario. We we have not come to any conclusion. I think there might be some what I consider to be inexperience, and as a result of that, some things are overlooked. I heard a lot of statements being made, but the truth is, so far we haven't seen any evidence of corruption as is, 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 is reported in social media. It's one of those challenging investigations, but I think the men and women have the capacity and the skills and the competence, and we will use all the resources that we have to ensure that there is some level of closure and justice is served in this case. It's a very brutal act. We are up to the task and we had a review just about two days ago. I heard discussion about whether or not one person should go on the scene, but if you have two persons working at, at any station, you can't leave the station and man, the sergeant actually took his decision. And it's a sudden death that he went to investigate that it was not an any hostile situation. So it's not abnormal really. Yeah, so as you listen to um, Deputy Commissioner of Police, which really, you know, um, it is so disenchanting and listening what he's saying. So what I'm um, basically saying that the, um, the incompetence in the Jamaica Constable, that incompetence in the Jamaica Constable Force, you know, the absurd promotion to sergeant, 
So this type of walking video delve into the baffling incident where the Jamaica Constabulary Force promoted an individual to sergeant despite their evident incompetence in carrying out their duties. Prepare to be astounded as we dissect this mind-boggling scenario and shed light on the absurdity within the system. Dive into the inner workings of the Jamaica Constabulary Force as we analyze how such a questionable decision was made, raises the essential questions about integrity and judgment in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, in this prestige institution that has been dismantled from within. So we at the Jamaica Young's Police Channel explore the implication of this irresponsible promotion, highlighting its potential impact on public safety, trust and morale. In dissecting the core aspect of this case, from the selection process to the various factors contributing to this incomprehensive decision, we aim to spark a conversation on the overall effectiveness and accountability of the Jamaican Constabulary Force within the society it serves. As we uncover the incident, details, facts and public response, we encourage viewers to critically analyze the situation and question the credibility and transparency of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. You know that the murder of Melissa Silvera, yes, it was disclosed to be fully cover-up. And to see that the, the hierarchy of the police, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, they are not on the ball. You can't say the police force has become a party shop. It's the incompetences you can't hear it from a mile. Yes, the incompetence, you know, it's no joke anymore. The police force is just full of, um, what should I say? I um, should put it as simple as this. These are not career police officers, but um, these are corporate police. <laughs> yeah, corporate, yeah, you know, corporate police, they are like, um, they call them, uh, they, they, they would call them, loss prevention officers so these are not police officers no? these are loss prevention officers having police powers because they don't know what what the hell they are doing so we'll also explore the consequences that may arise when incompetence is rewarded and competence merits are undermined so they, they, they have been dismantling the police force enough for many years yes that's what they have done yeah that's what they have been you know so they have been dismantling the police force and they are very successful right now in doing it so by engaging with this video, you are joining us in illuminating this perplexing situation and advocating for, more, for a more accountable, competent and trustworthy Jamaica Constabulary Force. We at the Jamaica Young Police Center, we don't know when that is going to happen because the entire um, Jamaican society is a corrupt and a criminal's paradise. Yes, can you believe that police officers are calling police informers now and stuff like that? In which that should not be, but when I was there, it was a part of the culture within the police force. I know it's rampant. If you're a known criminal in the police force right now, you are give, um, given and shown more respect than the police officer who's adhering to the rule of law. Yeah, you know, so by and you know, by so we, you know, moving on, you know, so share your thoughts, experience, and insights in the comments below, comment section below. Yeah, don't miss out on the strongly opinionated examination of incompetence in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the absurd promotion to sergeant. If you haven't subscribed, if you have reached this far in the video and you haven't subscribed to the Jamaica Young Police channel, before we go any further, yes, subscribe to the channel, yes. Hit the subscription button, select all so that whenever we, that's the bell, select the bell and select all so that when we at the Jamaica Young Police channel release a video, you'll be the first one to receive the video itself yes yeah, so that you can be able to view it yeah hit the thumbs up button yeah the thumbs up button means that you like the content and once you're over here you must love the continent if you hit the down button that means you're a criminal supporter you're not supposed to be over here because we don't want any criminal supporters over here we already said it in the video in the introduction yes share the video share the video with your friend your girlfriend your boyfriend your side chick your man chick you understand? Yes, yes, side man chick. Or side man, yes, side man. Yes, side man work on trucks. Uh, no side man I work 
all of yeah, I work all in a people life and them things. Yeah, side man. So you have side man and side chick. Yeah, share it with your mama, your papa, your grandpa, yeah, you know, and even the kids them because you know the Jamaica young police and it's kid friendly. Yeah. Um join the the, um, the Patreon squad, yeah, join the Patreon squad or or join the channel so that whenever you'll be able to see videos that are on the Patreon squad that is not on YouTube, YouTube, YouTube rule, YouTube rules, regulations, policies and laws that govern their platform. And you know, we use YouTube as a means of sending out the various messages so that, you know, um, we can share our thoughts and what we think and share, you know, our thought-provoking content as we continue to shed light on pertinent societal issues. So, you know, DCP um, Bailey, you know, says, um, yeah, this is what he says. He says, no corruption in Melissa Sylvia probe. But only, you know, if you believe in if you believe in Santa Claus, well, you can accept that as a Christmas gift. But we don't believe in a Santa Claus over here. And we don't share sympathy drinks or sympathy food. And don't expect any sympathy Christmas cake or sympathy, um, sorry. You won't get that from us. You're at the Jamaica Young Police Channel. So this is what Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime, Fitzbailey, says. There has been no evidence of corruption in the conduct of the policeman who was the first responder at the house where Melissa Silvera was found dead on November 10th, 2023. I'm wondering if they, the police, if they, um, the senior investigator, if they have viewed this policeman cell phone and for the text messages that he had received from Silvera, yes, yeah, from the former um, PMP, criminal organization, member of parliament. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if they have checked that because he's the one that received the message. So now that they're saying it's two police officers at the police station, so why didn't the police, why the sergeant, why Sergeant Dabney did not drive the police service vehicle? Why he drove his private car? That's the, that's a million dollar question. So Mrs. Silvera, the wife of former Western St. Mary MP, Jalan Silvera, was murdered inside the matrimonial home an old stone wall in St. Andrew. Initial reports indicated Mrs. Sylvia died in her sleep. And I want to tell you, St. Andrew, when, she, when they put hey, everyone, including all the Prime Minister, everyone posts, oh, rest in eternal peace and sad news and this and that. Now that it has become murder, them start saying it's a tragedy, as if it's an accident. A murder, you know, and all of these politicians are saying a tragedy. Because all of them knew, you know, that this man, you know, even long before, you know, like this man used to beat all the wife, you know, man. Like with that, yeah, you see, like WWE, like you say, um, Lex Logan. If you used to watch WWE Raw back in the days in the 1990s, when them used to all cheer and lick down people, I saw him used to be cheating. You know? So I know, you know, I'll, I'm police, you know, and she called police, and when them come, because you understand, she she have her emotional. She wear emotion on her shoulder. She no bother about them lock him up on them thing and them not take away him gun because I'm a high society guy and man speak um, the Queen English and all him, you know, all the fancy th- terminology, you understand what he use. So he can use all the big the big um synonyms and you understand and to so show that his IQ is way above par. So but a postmortem report show she died from gunshot wounds causing the police to open a murder probe. So DCP Bailey says the investigation has been transferred from St. John the North Police Division to the Major Investigation Division, MID. He says it is not unusual for only one member of the JCF to process a dead scene. DCP Fitz Bailey, he was speaking on Cliff Hughes online. That was Thursday. So, you know, so moving on, you know, so, you know, in this eye opening video, we bring to light the shocking truth behind the Melissa Sylvia murder probe and the alleged police corruption surrounding it. Brace yourself as we uncover the intricate web of deceit and manipulation orchestrated by those sworn to protect and serve. Prepare to be astounded as we challenge the credibility of DCP Bailey. Yeah, we are challenging his credibility. I'm not have none. The supposed guardian of justice who adamantly claim that there is no police corruption in this case. Really, uh, Mr. Bailey, we don't believe you. We are telling you, how can we believe him? How can we believe a man when an acting inspector of police, Sergeant Dabney, Dabney has publicly declared his allegiance to the PMP criminal organization, his allegiance to 
Corporal Rowan James, who's Comrade James. He's uh, yeah, Sergeant Dabney is Comrade Dabney. And he has publicly declared his allegiance to the PMP criminal organization. Uh, you understand? Which is yeah, the PMP the PMP criminal organization. It's a part of it's a group within the Jamaica Con Jamaican Constabulary Force, yes. You have police officer in a police force to tell in a station they're my big oh my PMP police. And guess what? And nothing happened to him. He's not supposed to do it, you know, but it's normal. I've never seen a police say my labor right police yet. Because the labor rights are more um, sensible and more smarter police than the PMP LGBTQ plus police officer. Most of them they are criminals, thieves, robbers, coke robbers. Yeah, we can name them. Like the ox, the cowboys, and we can go on and them things. So the evidence speaks for itself, and it's hard to trust someone who blatantly disregard the same disregarded. So who knows a DCP Bailey is not is not somebody who you can trust. We have seen it over and over. But let's not forget DCP Bailey has an history of questionable statements. Yeah, and when we say questionable statements, we just have to try to make it like so nice, but we are going right down to the real mama papa truth now. Yeah, uh, yeah, DCP Bailey is a liar. We don't believe nothing what I'm saying. Yeah man and all I'm friend them can beg to a police and we don't care, we just tell you as it is. Bailey a liar. A reason why we say that, yeah, yeah. Oh, you think be, after Bailey can't beat we don't live a Bailey yard. Fitz Bailey a liar and the reason why we said that he's a liar because the case of Patrick Bailey. Yeah, you understand? You have to understand you know, even our district council could have closed that case still and it's still open. But we said that you know, we said to the family of the man, Mr the man that was killed at his home, that the family need to make a complaint to the the, the, um, the, the, um, the Department of Justice in yeah, in 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 um, Washington D.C. so that they can extradite um, Patrick Bailey to the United States of America and try him in America because Mr. B um, the deceased man, yes, the deceased man is an American citizen. So you understand, and America is the only country in the world you know, where if you kill one of their citizens abroad, you know, they can chat, they can try you in America for that case. The only country in the world, yes, that to show you America or America is powerful. So remember when he confidently informed us that there was no forced entry into the womb, into Patrick, into the womb of Patrick Bailey. Yeah, we, you know, there's a murder case that happened there where two individuals were present and only one survived. And the only survivor is Patrick Bailey. The other man mm, is dead. And it seems like an open shop case to him. But can we rely on his version of his events? No. Because I'm saying, why are they still investigate? What is there to investigate when the case is an open and shut case? Even a groundsman, even a groundsman who, uh, who have been around the police for some time, we don't know, say him know if he investigated. You understand? So join us on this journey as we expose the truth and shed light on the corruption lurking within Melissa's Silvera murder probe. It is time to demand justice on all those responsible for their actions. We will not rest when the real culprits are identified and the truth prevails. Stay tuned for more shocking revelation and in-depth in analysis of this case. We delve into the shocking truth behind the murder of, Mel of Melissa Silvera, whose case was initially reported as a sudden death. However, little did the Jamaican public know her untimely demise was a result of a chilling murder. Uncovering the intricate web of corruption and cover-up, cover cover we explore the role of former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson in doing everything and make sure that the truth was revealed. So we have to give thanks to P.J. Patterson. He's the one why we know that it was a murder. So as the investigation unfolds, it's become alarmingly clear that the initial sergeant of police assigned to the case lacked the necessary skills to investigate a potential murder properly. That is what Fitzbilly is telling you. Surprisingly, three gunshot wounds were discovered by the pathologist who was performing the autopsy in Melissa, and Melissa's body while it lay in the mall, indicating unmistakable signs of violence. So the police officer, so everyone was in, was in this cabal, you know, this conspiracy to cover up this murder case. From the undertaker, from the poli from the husband to the aunt, to the police to the undertaker, you understand? Because they were sh uh, look, they were shopping you know, all around you know, for a death certificate to cremate the body. You know, there's no plan for anything. You know, it was a cremation. It was gonna have. 
You understand? But that's not, but that's not all. During this time, Melissa's husband, Mr. Jylan Silvia, was actively seeking a doctor to provide, provide a sudden death certificate to cremate her body and conceal the truth forever. Yeah, man. Thank, thankfully, alongside an independent doctor, P.J. Patterson thwarted this sinister cover-up attempt, shedding light on the disturbing depth of corruption within the police force. Yeah, so we can say for once, P.J. Patterson have done something good. Yeah, man, good for Jamaica. Because, uh, is, you know, say, the, the deceased is P.J. Patterson's goddaughter. And yeah, if it was for his intervention, may I tell him, man, them get away with murder, big time. You understand? Because that is what it was all about, you know, to cover it up. Get the, the a good thing, Doctor. Hey, trust me. If Doctor Jeff Pafford, um, if he if that man did not pass earlier, me I tell I am telling you, this case would be over. This murder would cover up. So imagine how many murder cases that man cover up. Jeff Pafford, he his brother is corrupt, but not that corrupt. The, you understand? The, the one that's alive, you know that they're twins. Because if he was that corrupt as his brother, you would have delivered a death certificate to them. But you know that, um, yeah, the four, they are not, they are not fans of um, Mark Golem. Because they say Mark Golem, them as, yeah, you know, you call them as corporate parasites. You understand? Yeah, so, you know, so PJ Patterson thwarted that man. You understand? It, PJ, thankfully, PJ Patterson thwarted this sinister cover up attempt, shedding light to the disturbing depth of corruption within the police force. So, P you have to give PJ Patterson the credit for this. So, from deeply rooted corruption to a startling lack of competence, it raises troubling questions about the integrity of the entire police force. Are they merely inept or thoroughly corrupt? Join us on this uncovering journey as we expose the truth and shed light on the events surrounding Melissa's, Sylvia's death or murder. You understand? So we want to, you know, stay in tune and, you know, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. You know, now for more shocking revelation and stay tuned for updates and this gripping case together, let's unveil the truth behind, you understand, this corruption and the astonishing cover-up of Melissa's, Sylvia's murder. So we delve into the shocking story of how P.J. Patterson, the former Prime Minister of Jamaica, intervened just in time to prevent a potential murder from going unnoticed. Exposing Jamaican corruption, or P.J. Patterson save the day, this compelling, accurate account will leave you questioning the integrity of the government and the police force. Without the intervention of P.J. Patterson, the husband would have successfully concealed the crime, burying crucial evidence along with his wife remains. When we say burying, we are talking about cremated. Yeah, may I tell you, incinerated, the only thing you get a dust. However, P.J. Patterson's swift actions prevent the wife's body from being cremated. Yeah. And P, uh, most people didn't know that, that uh, Melissa Sylvia is P.J. Patterson's goddaughter. So they mess with the wrong um, girl. You understand? So Mr. Sylvia should have been in jail already. If it was... Hey, that's why we're telling you. You see Jamaica? Jamaica... Uh, a two-tier system, yes. One for the rich, one for the rich, one for the elite, and one for the poor, and the police. Yeah. Well, three. They have one for the police. Yeah. Anything where police do, you know, especially with command to getting rid of criminal. Yeah. Them forgot prison, and them hide evidence, hide the firearm, and all of them thing there. Just like how Katy Pike did with the woman police officer, the uh, the three police officer on board the reserve that they sent to prison. Yeah. You understand. So, you know, so, what am I tell you? So, it's P.J. Patterson, why this, you know, save the wife's body from being cremated, preserving p substantial evidence that was vital for the investigation. This incident sheds light on the profound depths of corruption within the Jamaican constabulary force that reaches the top. Unfortunately, this is not an isolated incident, but a distressing reflection of a broken, corrupt field system called the Jamaica Constable Air Force. By bringing this story to light, we aim to sh shine a much needed spotlight on the Jamaica Constable Air Force pervasive corruption issue. Through awareness, pressure can be applied to those to tho to all those responsible, accountable and initiate meaningful changes to restore justice. Join us as we expose the dark underbelly of Jamaican corruption. 
and highlighting the bravery of P.J. Patterson, the former Prime Minister of Jamaica, for his unwavering commitment to justice. Yeah, we want to thank Prime Minister P.J. Patterson for his intervention. We invite you to watch this gripping video and share it with others and participate in the ongoing discourse about corruption to foster a brighter future for Jamaica. Some people do not have any um, any faith in the future of Jamaica because all they say, they say, they say, is corruption, 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 nothing else. They say everything in Jamaica is so corrupt that you can't even trust not even the police that you use. So at least you could have trust a few, but it seems like the entire police force, you understand, is just full of corruptors. This is what they want and this is what they get. They have been they have been fighting the fighting to dismantle the police force from, from um, nineteen eighty nine and they have finally succeed. So don't miss out on this significant expose documenting the tale of how PJ Patterson prevent a murderer from escape justice. Stay informed, stay engaged, and let's try for a corruption free society together. Hopefully. Yes, they have to take some action as what they did back in um Singapore, but hey, you know, our, well, you know that even the leader of Jamaica is corrupt. You know, you know what I'm saying? We're saying that because you can't even trust anything that comes out of that man's mouth. We have, we lack one, one, one thing that lacking in Jamaica is leadership. Leadership and leadership with truth. We have no everyone in a Jamaica in a leadership are liar. When I say a liar, then a liar. You cannot trust a word that comes out of their mouth. They are such liars. Because remember, you know, as, a, as a people, we were cultured, nurtured to be criminal supporters. Yeah, and that is what is happening. Even from the Prime Minister, you can't trust nothing. You can't, hey, the only time you can't trust the Prime Minister that he's breathing is because you see him standing. These people are narcissistic. These are professional liars. These are unconscionable people. Yes, the opposition is even worse. Because him just lie, him just lie as if it is nothing. And you know the people them just gobble it up. Gobble, 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 gobble. You understand? Man, I'm telling you, it is just, you know, if you if you know which animal, which bird is that you gobble, 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 gobble. Yeah, that's how the populace uh, of the Jamaican people and the people of the PMP criminal organization that support it. Yeah, if the people, in, especially people in a criminal PMP criminal organization, if them smell DD. Yeah, a Mark Golden and the PMP tell him, say, no, it's roast beef. Them change and say, yeah, it's roast beef. I'll do them knows I tell them, say, well, they must smell in it, real in it. You understand? So they must say, boy, well, hey, you know what? It's a roast beef we're touched. In another roast beef, stop going like fool and, and, you know, wake up to your senses. So we can say for sure that the Jamaica Constabulary Force is entirely of police officers as a political directorate has done an excellent job by enacting the Indicom Act. Yeah, so you know what they have done, you know, the politicians, they have enacted a hack name, Indicom Act. So, all, yeah, the Indicom Act, let me tell you what it right now. Indicom Act is an act where criminalized police officer, just by not giving a statement. You know, we have served in the Jamaica Constabulary Force back in Jamaica, and we tell you, you know, that's why we say we do not, we, we have, we have zero love for Bruce Golden. So, you know, zero, that means we don't have no love for Bruce Golden. Bruce Golden was not, Pallet was not labor right it was an opportunist. And Bruce Mole, Bruce Golden, you see, when, when you're a criminal, nobody now for corrupt you, because know, you're already a criminal. Bruce Golden was always a criminal minded person. Bruce Golden was the kind of man that he never see a murder where he never loved. So he did love Milo in a Spanish town and he come to Tivoli. So Dudus was his favorite, like him son. You understand? And he did everything. So the Indicom Act, you know, should I name Christopher Dudus Quok Act? Indicom Act should have named Indicom Act. It should have named Christopher Dudu Squawk Act. Because for years the PMP wanted this act. Because you know the PMP don't create jobs. All the PMP does is create the conveyor of belt of criminals. Yes, they just keep... Remember 98% of the criminals in prison in Jamaica, they are PMP supporters and activists. And they're from, you understand, they are from this kind of um, communities in Jamaica. So they, they are the one that has done that. So the police force now, it's become incompetent. Yeah, man. So, you know, so the Indicom Act has not only gutted the police force, but also destroying it, an incompetent police force. So the police force is, is incompetent, you know, that can't investigate a simple case of sudden death. And we have seen a murderer walking around free because the murderer, who is, uh, you know, the killer, is connected to the political brass in Jamaican politics, like the prime minister and the 
and, and the opposition. They are all of them are friends, because you don't hear them complain about it, because a friend, a protect friend, liar, protect liar. You understand? So what are the service to the Jamaican taxpayers? A police force for good corruption and full of corruptors and hustlers. Only God can help us. Yeah, man, the reality of corruption, you know, unveiling the incompetence and political ties within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. You understand, as we delve into shocking truth about the Jamaican Constabulary Force, where corruption and incompetence run rampant. You know, corruption and incompetence are tearing. Yeah, man, Jamaica Constabulary Force leaving innocent lives at stake. Them don't care you know, because they're a part of them thing. So the politi political directorate enactment of the Indicom Act was supposed to bring justice and accountability, but instead it just left us with a gutted police force. Incompetence run deep with the ranks of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. That's why I have a sergeant now where him don't even know, him can't even investigate sudden death. I don't know that's uh, in a case of sudden death. So what they want to say, oh, we know we want to preserve the deceased um Privacy. The woman dead. So you look upon her body all over, upon her body everywhere. Your man and them things that you supposed to do your job. Them say I want police. So because I want woman and them fix up her ear. And them create the, the uh, they are the one you know that's that, that stage the crime scene, you know. So we don't know how this is going to work out. You understand? And if when him he's arrested, if he's go well we know say not go arrest. And if them even arrest him my beat it and him. Cause you have Chief Justice Brian Lego Sykes, a PMP. LGBTQ plus criminal activists on the bench. So in the, if them even arrest him, he may beat it. Because PMP is not going to prison in Jamaica. Yeah, PMP is a, Jamaica is a PMP country. That means it's a peer corruption. You understand? You know, see it. So they struggle to investigate even a more straightforward case like sudden deaths. Families left mourning. The less of their loved ones are denied justice because of an incapable police force. How can we be safe when murderers roam free? A uh, 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 whole heap of murderers. So this is not just a case of ineptitude. It is about. It is also about political ties protecting criminals. We have witnessed murderers walking free because they are connected to the political brass in Jamaican politics. It is a disservice to the hardworking Jamaican taxpayers who deserve a police force that fight for justice, not corruption. How can the people of Jamaica trust those? meant to protect them when they are the corruptors and hustlers. How can the people do that? Jamaica need change. Jamaica need a police force that stands up for justice and put the safety of its citizens first. Not a police force that is looking out for the corruptors who are the polit political elites and people who are connected. The people are tired of the corruption. It's time to hold the corrupt and incompetent accountable. How can we get back our country? That's what the people keep asking. The Jamaican people want their country. And they want it back from these people. The corruption is rampant within the police force. Corruption. Corruption. Incompetence. Yeah, man. Rampant in our police force. How can the people of Jamaica get back their country from these corrupt peoples who claim that they are police officers and politicians when we know that the top of the political food chain is corrupt? Yes, and this is the first time we are ever going to say something positive about P.J. Patterson. And we thank P.J. Patterson for our intervention. If it was for P.J. Patterson, this would be a murder case swept right under the rug and the murderer would get away with murder. Yes, because the murderer is a PMP member of the PMP criminal organization. Yeah, man, and I just saw it going to Jamaica. You, cut, you mix, you, have, you align with certain people, you can't get away with any crime. So, let's see what will happen um, in the coming week. You know, Mr. Silvera seems like he's going to be spending Christmas. He and Sergeant Dabney will be spending Christmas at home while the victim family is still mourning. And we know that PJ Patterson is half, right now he's mad. And his mother, Mark Golin, who haven't come out forcefully. But you know that, hey, trust me, Jamaica is around like a patty shop. Hey, look, who can get out, get out. And who can't, you got to stay. Have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.